Okay, everybody, I'm about to give you guys my top five scariest awakenings in the game. Now, remember, these aren't all awakenings that are modified. They're not all enhanced. They're not in any particular order, order and this is all my opinion. So, you know, I, I will say this a little, there's, there's one, one little bias, maybe, not really, could be, I don't know yet, in there, but we'll see. Um, they have, like, logical reasons of why I consider them, like, top five scariest awakenings, um, to me, like, in terms of, like, potential and everything like that. Everybody in this game can do massive damage, we all know this, but, um, and there's so many opinions for this game, and we all know this, so, if you guys have a top five, give me the list, and put it in the description, have fun with it, I don't care, everybody has enti entitlement to their own opinion, so you can, you know, have fun with it. And, let's start. Okay guys, so first up we have Sabo, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him first, so that way I don't have anyone talking about, but where's this character at, where's this character located? He's gonna be the first person on my scariest video list. Now remember, this is not a top five, this is simply just um, five of the scariest awakenings in the game, or it could be top five scariest awakenings, but they're not in any particular order, as I said before. So, um, Sabo is up here, um, primarily because while he's actually in his awakening, he doesn't he doesn't get any like sort of modifications any of his stuff at all whatsoever it's just the damage of which is flame fist that is the reason he is added onto this list as you guys know flame fist can be used in a combination of a lot of attacks it can be used after his heavy break it can be used after his dragon's breath it can be used after a variety of other combos it can be used after his a4 in, in his basic combo it can be used after his uh what's called again dragon's claw so, I mean, it can just be used in a lot of situations. It can be used like this. So, one of the, the, the big things about Awakening Sabo is going to be the Flame Fist. And before you say, is this the only reason that he's in his top five? Yeah, this is the probably the only reason he's in my top five and top five scariest um, Awakenings. Now, in your Awakening, um, Sabo doesn't give any benefits, any bonuses, like I said. He doesn't really get, like I said in this, in this uh, what's, it, what's it called? Moveless video. He doesn't get any of that. The only thing is that, you know, you get a damage boost and Flame Fist gets damage boost. So look at Flame Fist here. Uh, we're going to do the speed Flame Fist. It's a little bit of damage. Good damage. Actually, pretty amazing. And so let's go with the enhanced version of Awakening. Tremendous. It's almost 50%. Dangerous move. Um, <laughs> so the thing about Flame Fist in this mode, let's go with, with like all this Look at that. Because you hit, get hit twice. And we're on a wall. I say that, but it's like if you match Flame Fist perfectly with your uh, heavy, you'll actually be able to hit him twice with the Flame Fist. Pretty cool, isn't it? But even then, check out how much damage that's doing normally. Compared to the double hit, so you can you can notice where a double hit actually plays, what puts the play in there. So when you add it up with the um, the powers of the awakening, it's pretty much 100% combo if you get the heavy guard break with the flame fist. Now dragon breath, not so much. You might be able to get a double on that. I mean, it's the same thing. I guess when they're falling, you can hit them twice with the flame fist. But um, a good rule of thumb when Sable's Ashen is awakening is. You know he's actually going to use Flame Fist in one of the combos. So let's do a basic combo here into the Dragon's Claw. This is a combo used primarily against characters at Logia because if you do this combo this way, um, you can pretty much um, uh, enhance the Flame Fist with Hockey. But of course you can do it a little bit of basic way if you don't want to get too many hits. And you can go ahead and do a straight up almost 50, well more than 50%. But another thing that makes him scary while in his Awakening it's the fact you can actually pull the Awakening out. If you use it early on, of course, Flame Fist is also a unity. And you can get that 100% tagged up with another character. Now at the end of this little section, I'm going to show you an example of what, what, what you can do with Sable and his Awakening and how much damage potentially you can actually perform. He can do a, his Awakening, or <laughs> his Awakening, he can use his ultimate right there at the Flame Fist. So he can basically ride his own Flame Fist in a matter of speaking. Too far away. Basically carry the mantle of the Flame Fist here. 
You can't skip these, I forgot about that. Oh, that's unfortunate. You're gonna see this twice. But okay. So, um, one of the main reasons he's up here in the top five is because Flame Fist, it will enhance with the Awakening, is super strong. This is not even considering pluses or killer or anything like that. But you're, if you can um, target your opponent down the very beginning of the, like as soon as you go into your Awakening, you can pretty much get a 100% combo on them uh, with the use of Unity Chain. Or you can perhaps go for a um, straight Awakening, like an ultimate move, I mean, to get some damage off that way. Uh, if you, and let, it depends if you want the safe switch in or if you want just the, the raw damage from the ultimate. And if, from wall capability, he does so much damage already with the Flame Fist combinations and Heavy Guard Break. You can pretty much do a lot more, of course. Now, it is arguable that he being added onto this list is like, well, what about Sanji? What about Luffy 3K? What about all these other characters that go into their Awakening and do a ton of damage? Uh, well, yeah, that's the thing, but... This is my personal opinion, and uh, I want to put Sabo. No, not you, Burgess. Sabo. Okay, so watch this little kill up at the very end, and we'll go to the next character. Okay, so it goes to no surprise that Frankie is added onto this list in my top five scariest awakening. So it doesn't even matter at this point exactly um, what Frankie does in his base form because we're just going to talk about the awakening. Let's go ahead and transform. So Frankie's awakening is Frankie Shogun, General Frankie, how you want to call it. It means the same thing depending on what type of nationality you're using. So while he's in this form, his chip damage is astonishingly good. Like, okay, we're gonna look at his damage here normally. So, okay, we got some damage there. Okay, I'm a little bit far away for this one. Let me get a little closer. Okay. So yeah, so we see all that damage. Beautiful, I know. I mean, not really, kind of. It's kind of eh. But okay, let's tell him to go into straight up block. So the thing about Frankie while he's in this form is that he punishes your opponent for blocking. Which means, I mean, your opponent can, of course, get hit by these attacks. They can try to, like, you know, not block at all and just kind of take them. But they run the risk of getting hit by the ultimate. So, Frankie doing this, look at this chip damage. It's pretty good. Uh, we go into the, um, I don't know what this move is called. Watch your step. Yeah, watch your step. It does a lot more damage on, on block than it does by getting hit. And, of course, you have the unblockable. So, the thing that makes this dangerous, like I said, is the chip damage. And you're going to get chipped a lot when fighting Frankie. And the thing about it, too, you're just going to have to take it. Because as soon as you let up and you press any sort of button, he's going to hit you with this Frankie Blast. And, yeah, I'm calling it Frankie Blast. And that's what makes Frankie Shogun dangerous and one of, like, the top five scariest, like, awakenings, in my opinion. Because while he's in this form, the chip damage is so good... And like, I mean, yeah, he has chip damage in his base form. Going into Awakening there, you get the benefits of armor and also the benefit of not being knocked back. So you're doing constant chip damage to your opponent the entire time. And the only thing your opponent can do can dodge, go to left, and go to right. If they're playing characters like Whitebeard and Kuma and Blackbeard, perhaps because of the wide body, Doflamingo probably, they won't be able to really do much against Watcher Step, and they'll have to accept the chip. And they do want to get hit, so be it. They get hit. They're going to get hit with damage, and that's fine. You want to do damage. Yeah, sure, they can try their best to kind of like, you know, I'm just going to get hit on purpose and, you know, perp and like, you know, not take all that massive chip damage. And that's fine. But either way, you're going to take more damage from, you know, the bullets than you are from the actual block. And at the end of the day, you're still doing damage at this point when they start getting hit with it with moves like this they're like okay when this is over i'm going to switch out my character i'm going to switch out my character to heal my green health and if they do get hit that's just unrecoverable that's now unrecoverable and that's good for you so being added to this top five scary or scariest uh, awakenings is just that's why he's just a massive threat when he goes in his form because the chip damage he deals is astonishingly good now of course ways around um getting out of frankie shogun's um tragicness is to use characters that have teleports 
or to just like be a victim and get hit by his ultimate. Uh, characters like Bartho and even, uh, what's that guy's name? Marco do an excellent job getting away from Frankie, Bartho being the less uh, financial choice, you know, all your resources and everything. Um, excellent choice, honestly. And then Marco being one of the you know more expensive choices to get away from the massive amount of chip damage that Frankie is going to deliver to you without even a warning. Okay, next on my list is Luffy, our pre-time skip Luffy. And everyone already knows that he was going to be added into the top five scariest uh, awakenings. Opinionated, I keep saying that because, you know, I got to because people might get confused. Uh, so when Luffy goes into his awakening, he goes into straight gear second. Everything becomes faster. Everything becomes insanely speedy. I can't really like express how fast his character becomes and how dangerous his character actually becomes. Look at this. Look how fast this. Look at this, this punch. Okay, look at this size step. He's no longer really evading. It's more like. And for a character that can already go like all around, all around the other character. Being like this fast and being able to do it in this speed is extremely scary. I mean, yeah, he's not gonna do any like you know teleports or anything like that. But the fact that like it's a thing. Okay, so compared to this, this punch is really slow. Okay, we got the bazooka and we got the barrage. So we're gonna show those off right there. Going to his awakening. This is now the punch. This is now the bazooka. And this is now the barrage. When Luffy goes into this state, he becomes a prime anchor. Um, he he doesn't really have what what I like to call what I call it the normal bit benefits of you know other characters going to their awakenings. Not most characters with awakenings where they really just get enhanced. Um, he becomes a completely different character. I mean, yeah, some moves are kind of generally the same. Uh, just like. He feels like a whole different person. Like, it's not Luffy, it's Gear 2nd Luffy. Technically, you know, Future Zone. Um, but in all cases, when you give this Luffy buffs or anything like that, he becomes a very dangerous force. Certain combos that normally didn't work before actually work now. Can I do this here? No, I think I have to hold it. Ugh, this makes me mad. There we are. Blah, 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 yeah, he's not done. Give this man plus two, plus one, whatever, and this massive gear second damage is going to be so good. And I guarantee you're going to get a couple of hits off with this character because he's so fast, people are not going to be able to like comprehend to in order to dodge it. Characters, um, big characters, slow characters are going to get destroyed. Characters that are range based are going to get destroyed. I'm just saying, one of the only things that I can feel like you can do to get away to stop with your second Luffy is not let him go gear second Luffy. <laughs> Once he goes gear second Luffy, 30 seconds feels like 60 at that point. And if he's teamed up with Nahiko, even worse. I promise 100% I am not being biased. Yes, I added Gecko to the list. <laughs> Out of top five scariest uh, awakenings. Now remember, this doesn't have nothing to do with like you know, usage, anything like that. Like, these are just my opinions. So, the thing about Gecko that makes his awakening scary isn't really, like, the intimidation of damage. It's, like, how much damage he deals over time. You know, poison is a big thing. Um, poison takes a bit to kill you, but still pretty dangerous. As you know, Gecko is a range master, and he knows to know his chip character. He's also my favorite character in the game. So we're going to put him on guard here. You're going to look at this chip damage. Oop, I forgot. <laughs> Did the wrong variation. Okay, chip damage. So, okay, you know, it's not a lot. It's quite, actually, it's quite a bit for a chip. So now, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, how do I do it again? That oh, doesn't matter. I'm just going to grab him. Okay, so once I do that, the shadow taking ability, took a shadow, he's gonna be dying over time, right? You go into your awakening. Before I should mention this, um, in order to actually 
get your shadow back from Gecko when he takes your shadow is to knock him down or he has to switch out. But, as you know, when you go into your awakening with giant characters and get to that giant form, you cannot get knocked down. So that's one of the main weaknesses from Gecko are your move. Now, already he had Brick Bats, right? That pushed the opponent constantly back. But you're all you have to say to yourself, well, all I got to do is knock him down, make him fall over, and then I can have my shadow back and I won't slowly die. You fight Gecko 101, he's able to take your shadow. At this point, you have 30 seconds of losing all your HP without Gecko losing anything in return. And instead, you try to guard against this onslaught, you just try to wait it out as much as you can, and you're just gonna get chipped to death. This is one of the, like, the dirtiest things I, I honestly have actually thought of when playing this game with Gecko is to do stuff like this. Like, It's just too good. It's too good at that point. Like you, of course, you can beat it by simply um, not being put in this scenario. You get put in a one v one at Gecko. This is something that actually can happen to you. And before you realize, it's like, oh, I'm taking 50% of my health. It's too late. You're getting chipped, and you can try to avoid it. But the thing about it, Brickbacks is going to be a threat. Um, like simply, like, like, like simply running away from the shadow tech because it will not go away. This is not a um, a poison effect that goes away upon like uh, a certain amount of time. This is gonna continue until he switches out or until you switch out or until Gecko gets knocked down. Other than that, it will continually keep draining your HP. Like I said, so if it gets into a one-on-one -on -one scenario or even, or even if you're by yourself, period, Gecko can literally win the game. Checkmate, just like that. And it doesn't matter if you're like, oh, well, the comeback factor, you're going to be at 1%. You need assist death. It's over. Just saying. I'm not being biased. I'm just putting out facts of what I think is the top five scariest. Okay, guys. For the last character, we have Blackbeard. Now, Blackbeard is here for another obvious reason. His ultimate is tragically dangerous to people with full teams. And I say full teams, meaning in 1v1, eh, you know, it's okay. You know, you have two, your opponent has two characters, eh, it's okay. Your opponent has three characters, excellent, 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 excellent. The reason for this is that Blackbeard is the only character in the game that has an awakening that damages everybody on the list, and it uses the darkness. So, which means that they will not have ability for 10 seconds each. Not each, well, yeah, each. So, as you can see, the, the opponents are continuously being switched over with the last character being the very final person saying Goku here. So Ivan got damaged, Luffy got damaged the same amount, but Sengoku, all he's going to receive is the boom treatment right here. And you don't have your ability, yes, but you also can't switch out for 10 seconds as well. So um, technically, uh, I mean, that really only works if, you know, the character that dies whatever you know you know is is confusing if the character dies when getting hit by the ultimate um i do believe that it'll switch out it'll, it'll, it'll switch out the only last remaining person you have but that person may still be suffering from darkness fruit is what i'm trying to say so yeah like literally you can snipe with this move if there's someone in the background that is about to die a blackbeard will snipe them with his ultimate it won't hit the last character of course but it will do a snipe on that person in between. It's going to damage everybody on the list besides one person, which means if you are you have a full team against Blackbeard, Blackbeard is hurting all those people with Darkness Fruit and putting you in a 1v1 scenario, which means that, yeah, at first it was 1v3, but now it's 1v1, and that person is has to deal with the boom at the end of the uh, ultimate. That's literally like, it's a messed up thing, but it's, it's kind of niche in a way that it's really really good at the at like at the beginning when it's when you actually have your opponent as a full team um but of course the ultimate itself can actually be used from a distance and that's also another thing that makes it a good point so even from this angle it is a giant ball most people use it up close in combos and stuff and that is a possibility but it is a giant ball and there you see the switch out once again now ivan's getting hit you can combo it with your guard break you can combo it with your chop i mean like it's like 
it's, it's, it sucks. It sucks how much like damage you can cause. So let's do that full chop here. Let's do that chop. I just love seeing the chop. And do the chop into darkness. Like the, the fruit itself doesn't do that much damage, or the ultimate doesn't do that much damage. But look at how much it affects the game simply by being a threat. Darkness is already a threat, um, knocking your ability off, but forcefully switching out your opponent while they're getting hurt, they can still try to heal that green health when the echo goes up when the <clears throat> as the stop sign goes away but they still have to respect the fact that blackbeard has this really good tool as disposal so of course one of the ways to um avoid this is to potentially just wait it out um and try to like back off if you're if you put blackbeard into a scenario when you ha when you don't have a full team it's not as bad he doesn't get as much of the benefit from it. I mean, he's going to do damage to you, of course, and you're going to get the, the hit and the boom, but it's not going to be a switch out included. So, um, most cases, it's better to fight Blackbeard up close when dealing with that scenario, so that way we don't have any, at least we don't have any combos de being dealt to you while that um, resource is at his, you know, fingertips. So that was the top five. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I just remembered that I didn't introduce myself. Um, yeah, Zone Gaming Go, Silver Kiji slash Silver Koji. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, <laughs> gonna probably have some more uh, top five videos coming out in the future. Uh, that was just a fun one that I decided to do because I saw it for another game. So um, yeah, as you already maybe listened to at the beginning of the video, if you have your own top five, let me know. Put it inside the comment section, not description if I said that. Um, I want to check it out because everybody has a good opinion for this game and, um, you know, it's always fun. I mean, no one's really wrong.